In this Lay of First Side tutorial, I will discuss a very important concept in organic chemistry, and that's carbocation stability. We will look at alkyl carbocations, including primary, secondary, and tertiary, and then we will look at conjugated systems, including the allylic and benzylic carbocations. In part two, we will look at reaction application for carbocation, including SN1 and E1 reactions, and understanding the reasoning behind Markovnikov's rule. A carbocation is a carbon that has a positive charge due to an incomplete octet where the carbon is missing electrons. Let's look at a simple example. The central carbon, which I highlighted in red, only has three other atoms attached to it. If I do a quick formal charge, carbon should have four valence electrons. This carbon, due to the three bonds from two carbons and one hydrogen, only has three electrons directly attached to it 4 minus 3 gives me plus 1, and that's where I get the positive charge on my carbocation. A few things to note about the carbocation. It is typically referred to as a carbocation. It can also be called carbonium and carbenium, but they are very infrequently used, so you don't have to memorize these. What you should know about the carbocation is that it's sp2 hybridized with an empty p orbital, the bond angle for an sp2 atom will be 120 degrees. Let's look at the carbocation from the side. I have a carbon with three bonding sp2 orbitals, and then I have an empty p orbital lying perpendicular to my flat carbocation. A common area of confusion with the carbocation is recognized that you don't actually have something positive, but rather the positive charge comes from a lack of something. So it's not that the positive charge occupies the p orbital, that p orbital is empty waiting for something to fill it. Because of this lack of electrons, a carbocation is going to be a very strong electrophile. Recall that the electrophile means electron loving or electron seeking, and the carbocation will be susceptible to attack by base or nucleophile. There are four types of standard carbocations. The first is formed when you have a carbon bound to just three hydrogens. You expect to see carbon bound to four hydrogens in a methane molecule. Therefore, this one has a positive charge, and I call this the methyl carbocation. When I have a carbon bound to one R group with just two hydrogens, this gives me a primary carbocation, and this is because the carbon holding the positive charge is a primary carbon. When I have a carbon bound to two R groups with just one hydrogen, this will be a secondary carbocation. And finally, when I have a carbon bound to three R groups with a positive charge, this gives me a tertiary carbocation. Carbon is an atom that is low in electronegativity and prefers to have no charge, positive or negative. Putting the positive charge on the carbon makes it unstable, and the only way to stabilize the carbocation is when it gets help from the groups around it. Many students will memorize carbocation stability, but if you can understand it, you'll have a much better chance at applying it to mechanisms. When deciding which is the more stable carbocation, look at two important factors. The first is the inductive effect. The inductive effect is almost like induced polarity. Carbon will try to steal some of the negativity from nearby sigma bonds. In doing so, those sigma bonds become slightly polar and take part of the positive charge, but the carbon holding the charge is now not as positive as it was previously. The second stabilizing factor on a carbocation is the partial overlap of nearby bonds. If the carbocation is attached to an R group, that R group, say a carbon, will have bonds that are very close to the carbocation and they stabilize it without actually giving it any electron density. Now if you're confused, as most students are, don't worry. Memorize the inductive effect, memorize hyperconjugation, but think of this entire concept as moral support. Essentially what's happening is the R groups that are near the carbocation are there to help the carbon bear its positive charge as if they're providing moral support. Looking back now at the methyl carbocation, it has no R groups nearby and no moral support. So the methyl carbocation will not form. A primary carbocation has one R group, and even though it provides some moral support, 
it's still not strong enough to help that carbon bear its charge and so the primary carbocation will not form either. When you get to a secondary carbocation, two R groups provide enough moral support to make this a stable carbocation. A tertiary carbocation, which is surrounded by R groups, think of it as surrounded by moral support and therefore this will be a super stable carbocation. If we try to make a trend from all this, tertiary is most stable, secondary is stable, primary and methyl will not happen. I will give you three different molecules. I want you to think about which carbocation is the most stable and why it's the most stable. For this problem, recognize that molecules A, B, and C are the same structure. The only thing that's different is the placement of the carbocation. In molecule A, the carbon holding the positive charge is on the end, giving me a primary carbocation. In molecule B, the carbon holding the positive charge is tri-substituted, meaning there are three R groups on it, giving me a tertiary carbocation. And in molecule C, the carbon holding the carbocation has two groups on it, giving me a secondary carbocation. If you look at the R groups as moral support, the tertiary has three groups around it, the most support making it the most stable. That's going to be one. The secondary carbocation in molecule C is the second most stable. And molecule A with a primary carbocation is the least stable because one R group is not enough to fully stabilize that carbocation. For these examples, we're going to look at the two molecules given and decide which one has the more stable carbocation. In problem A, my carbocation has one R group attached, making it a primary carbocation. My second carbon has two R groups attached, making it a secondary carbocation. This one is going to be more stable. For problem B, I have a tertiary carbocation. Don't get confused when you see line structure and ring. The central carbon has one, two, three R groups attached. That makes a tertiary. And the second problem, the carbon holding the charge only has one, two R groups attached regardless of what those other R groups have for now. Comparing a tertiary to a secondary, the tertiary carbocation is more stable. My last problem looks a little tricky, but you have to pay attention to the parentheses and the number following. In the first problem, I have two methyl groups on my carbocation, meaning I have a secondary carbocation. In the final problem, I have three R groups on the carbocation, giving me a tertiary carbocation. Once again, tertiary is more stable than secondary, and the second one is the more stable carbocation. The previous rules only applied to standard molecules with no double bonds or conjugated systems. But now, what happens when you have an allylic carbocation? An allele group is when you have a C double bound to a C, as a substituent on your chain, and an allylic carbocation will occur when you have a carbon to carbon double bond next to a carbon holding a positive charge. The reason this is important is a molecule like this has resonance, and resonance will always provide you additional stability. I will rewrite this molecule showing you the double bond as a pair of red electrons and my carbocation. Electrons, which are nucleophilic, will be attracted towards the positive carbon and essentially attack that carbon. When this happens, my double bond moves over so that the carbocation is now replaced with a pair of electrons. So recognize that the electrons, which formed a bond on the left side of this molecule, now form a bond on the right side of this molecule. The carbon on the end lost the double bond, has no electrons to replace it, and now gained that positive charge. This molecule is now free to have its pi electrons attack the positive charge again and resonate back and forth. This gives me an intermediate structure which shows my electrons going back and forth between the two double bonds and a partial positive charge on each terminal carbon where that carbocation would stay before it resonates again. 
Since resonance structures are really just a representation of an in-between molecule, that in-between has a partial charge on either end of the carbon, which is not quite as strong as a full carbocation. This means that a primary allylic carbocation is relatively stable because it's only half a carbocation on one side and half a carbocation on the other side. A primary allylic carbocation, as we just saw, is a positive charge occurring on a terminal carbon right next to a double bond. A secondary allylic carbocation is a carbocation on a secondary carbon next to a double bond. And a tertiary allylic carbocation is a tertiary carbon holding a positive charge next to a double bond. As with the stabilities of the standard carbocations, tertiary is more stable than secondary, which is more stable than primary. But recall that these overall are more stable than your standard carbocation, where a primary allylic is more stable than a standard secondary carbon, or about as stable as a secondary carbon, and a secondary allylic is about as stable as a normal tertiary carbon. A conjugated system is where you have a series of sp2 hybridized carbons with alternating double bonds. For the molecule shown, recognize that every carbon is sp2 hybridized due to its pi bond system or due to a carbocation. As you can imagine, this will be a lot more stable than a standard carbocation or allylic due to the many different forms that this resonating system can take. The first double bond can go to stabilize the carbocation, the second double bond can take its place, and so can the third, giving me a number of intermediates. These two molecules, one and two, represent just two of the intermediates showing where the carbocation can resonate to. However, you can actually put the carbocation here in position one. We have it shown in position two, position three, and position four. The resonance hybrid structure for this molecule will show the double bonds resonating all over the entire conjugated system, where partial positive will occur anywhere the carbocation can stop. This is the most stable system we've looked at so far, and this is due to the conjugation of the sp2 carbons and the double bonds. A benzylic carbocation is another perfect example of a carbocation that is stabilized due to a conjugated system. Recall that a benzene ring has six carbons with three pi bonds that constantly resonate inside the ring. A benzylic group is when I have a carbon coming out of this ring, and in this case, I will make this a CH2 with a positive charge. While this primary carbocation looks like it should be very unstable, you have to recognize that the pi bonds within the benzene ring can come out to help stabilize this carbocation, giving me the first resonance structure. I can once again move another pi bond within the benzene ring. And finally, I can move the third pi bond within the ring, giving me yet another resonance structure. From the fourth resonance structure, the double bond that is out of the ring can once again return towards the carbocation, reforming the benzene internal ring and giving me a similar structure to what I had to my starting material. Even though this is a primary carbocation, having a benzene ring right next to this carbon allows additional resonance that would otherwise not be possible, making this even more stable than a tertiary standard carbocation or even a secondary allylic carbocation. Even among benzylic carbocations, I can still find more and less stable groups. A tertiary benzylic is more stable than secondary benzylic, which is more stable than primary benzylic. But primary benzylic is more stable than the allylic and the standard carbocations because of the benzene resonance. Secondary and tertiary have benzene resonance along with hyperconjugation or moral support, making them the most stable carbocations.